Hey, welcome back to the channel. Do you have a Nintendo 64 Game Shark that seems to be dead? Well, the good news is it's probably only mostly dead. While the N64 Game Shark is a bit fiddly and it seems to corrupt its own memory a lot easier than any of the other cheat devices out there, the good news is there are a few methods of getting it to come back to life. So if you stick around, We'll show you how to get it done. All right, on the bench today, we have an N64, as you can clearly see. But we're not looking at the N64. We're looking at the Game Sharks. These are, as all of you are probably quite aware, uh, a cheat device um, that allows you to add lives or add power-ups or do other things that alters the code within a game. For the most part, the other systems that are cartridge-based, they don't need anything other than a cleaning once in a while. But on the N64, these guys are problematic. They lock up, they brick, you see them all the time, you know, being sold cheap because they're dead. The thing is, they rarely die. Um, I get them in all the time, and the reason I'm making this video is because I happen to have two on the bench right now. Um, so I want to show you, I want to walk you through the ways that you can unbrick these. Um, if you have a version two or higher, a device like this can just reflash it. But below a version two, they're, the only way to reflash the memory chips is to literally desolder them from the board, flash the two chips individually, resolder it to the board. And at that point, the labor becomes probably more than the value of the cartridge because these, st these are still only going for about 30 or $35. Uh, depending on the version. Now this one's a version 3.2 and it has the serial port on the back. But this one's unlisted and it has the data card slot. It's a version, um, I think it was a 1.8. A 1 um, I already took care of this one, but I wanted to, to show you a couple things with it. <clears throat> so, as you can see, our N64 is working and our cartridge is working. The first thing you want to do, if you've got a a game shark for an N64, um, just make sure it's clean. Um, a Q-tip with a little alcohol run back and forth, and this one's really pretty good. Um, you know, you'll get a little gray off of it, but, but this one seems like it's in nice shape. Um, and it, it's, of course, the shell's not dirty, but you can see there's a little bit of gray that came off. Honestly, there's probably nothing on there that would tell me that it's causing a problem. Now, the cartridge end is a little different. You can either take a credit card and wrap a piece of paper around it, maybe even put a dab of alcohol, run it in and out. Um, I like to use these wide craft sticks that can be bought at Walmart. Um, you can just soak them in alcohol and they're the exact thickness for these and you can just run them in and out real gentle. And of course, when they get dirty, you can just take a pair of scissors and cut that off. So one of those sticks will last a while. The other way of doing it <clears throat> is to take a cartridge. We know this one's already clean, but, and this is not the preferred method, but you know, hey, if you're at home and you just need to do it, Soak the cartridge and just kind of work it back and forth a little bit and then re-clean the cartridge. You know, do this a couple times until your, until your Q-tip comes up clean. Um, like I said, not the preferred method, but it absolutely works. I'm not blowing in that to make the cartridge work. I'm trying to dry the alcohol. All right, so let's just verify that our cartridge is working still. And it is. And forgive me, I got the volume down because I don't want to get hit with any uh, 
copyright or, um, you know, whatever the music stuff is. So anyway, so our cartridge is working. Now, I know this one is not working. So if we turn it on, we probably won't get anything. And as you can see, there's just kind of a random character. It almost looks like an A. Now, don't give up. Sometimes, you know, if these have been sitting, go ahead and reseed it. Do it a couple times even. Get the same character. And one last shot. All right, we got nothing, which is what I was expecting. Now, the way these Game Sharks work is that on the N64, there happens to be different security key unlock chips in these cartridges. But I guess um, Interact or uh, I can't think of the, the uh, Europe company, but uh, you know, the people that made the Game Shark. Action Replay, that's the one. Um, they had to put different key codes in this to work. Now, from my understanding, is sometimes when this goes to boot, it will actually look up its own internal key code on accident. And unfortunately what happens is it locks itself out. This can happen just randomly for no apparent reason. It can happen if uh, you know the cartridges get pulled under power that kind of corrupts the, the key code. Um, there's a few reasons for it. But these lock up all the time. <clears throat> now, I know on the internet there's a method of taking a good one and stacking it with the bad one and putting a cartridge on it. And that works a lot of times. Unfortunately, you can't do it if you have a version one and a version two or higher. They'll try to talk to each other, but it won't work. And, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now, the good thing is, if you are an N64 collector, you probably have a selection of games. And for the most part, I believe there's four or five different key codes. And the easiest way to try to get, to be, get back into these guys is to try some games. A lot of times, we will just be able to get back into it. And look at that. Diddy Kong unlocked it. All right, so this is in the version 2.1 and higher. This is gonna be kind of the same menu. And as I was saying before, this is a 3.2, which we can see here. All right, so we can put our Mario part uh, Mario way. Now, the way the key codes work is it works for one boot. So as you can see here, N64 and others, the majority of the games will fall under the key code of, of uh, Mario 64. But you can also see here, Diddy, uh, 1080, Banjo, uh, it's Kazooie, um, Griffey, Baseball, I believe, um, and there's a whole list. If you Google, matter of fact, I'll pull that list too, and I'll try to post it here. Is that good enough? That's probably good enough. Okay, so you can look through the list and see the different games. So we have Yoshi, F-Zero, um, Cruisin' World, which we have here, um, and the Zelda-based games, which also falls under, um, I believe, the Pokemon Stadiums. And uh, Mickey Speedway shows up on lists as a different key code. And it's a cheap game. So, you know, you can always grab that one just to have in your collection. Um, and it shows up under different key codes to be able to use it. Um, it's not under the official key codes, I don't believe. So, but as you can see, you can, you can select this. So we can put it back into Mario 64. Do we have this game? Yes, we have this game. Ask us to turn it off. We'll pull Diddy Kong. We'll put N60, uh, Mario 64 on it. And I'm guessing we're gonna be just fine now. Or not. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Let's make sure it's seated. There we go. 
like I said, sometimes it just takes a, a little wiggle. So, but here you go. But on that note, now if we turn it off, we unplug this, we put in Diddy Kong, we're not set for the key of Diddy Kong. So when it looks for its own internal key, it's a corrupt key, and we don't know which one it has selected. So, like I said, the easiest way back into it is to just try a few games. I have found, I was actually surprised the, the Diddy Kong unlocked it. I have found Cruisin' World unbricks most um, game sharks for the N64. And that's the only reason I have this game. Um, so now that we have an unbricked, an unbricked uh, game shark, we're good to go. We can play whatever we want. We can change the key codes as needed. So the one thing I wanted to show you with the earlier one, now this one was working because I already unbricked it, but you know, it might still be a little dirty, but let's make sure. There we go. Here's the early menus, okay? So on this, it doesn't tell you a whole lot about anything. So if you go through and you start plugging your different games on and you finally get into this main screen, first of all, sometimes this main screen looks scrambled. So don't panic, just let it be scrambled. It may actually go in and out. It may do some weird things. But once you set a key to a known working game, and like I said, the N6, uh, sorry, Mario 64 for the most part will unlock all of them or is the most used key code. To get into the key codes on this, you wanna pull left and right together. And there you go. It gets into the menu. And you can see here's Diddy Kong. And matter of fact, this one only has two key codes in it. And you could set your own key code here. And uh, you can still add there, here again, there's lists on the internet, do a quick, you know, uh, search on Google for key codes for GameShark N64. So I know I have seen countless ways of people saying, I've tried this, I've tried this, I've tried that. Honestly, clean, clean the cartridge very well. Make sure your console's clean. Make sure your game is clean, all your games. Then one by one, try different games. If don't just give up popping it in and trying it once. Pull it out, make sure it's straight, push it back in. Sometimes you just get a bad connection because these are fiddly. Now, since both of these are working and both of them are on Mario, I'll show you the stack method and I'll show you why it doesn't work on these ones. Hopefully it'll do it. Now, normally what would happen is the good one, the processor of the good one will force the operation of the bad one. And what will happen is you'll see them count together, assuming the bottom one is good. Don't accidentally reverse them because the bad one could flash the good one. But if you take an old one and a new one and put them together, you can see it counts incorrectly. So, and like I said, they won't flash each other. All right, so there you have it. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, people panic, they try to use a single game. Um, I know I did one just recently for somebody and it actually dawned on me. Um, I, I got his cartridge working and I told him it's running with Mario. And then he was having problems again and he sent me back a message and after I reread it, he said he was trying to play Zelda. Well, he needs to go in the menu and change the key code. And it's, like I said, something that I wasn't thinking of when I read his, his message. So there you have it. They're not that hard to get into. And there's usually a solution. Like I said, if you have a selection of games, and these are the popular games, Diddy Kong Racing, any of the Zelda games, Mario, um, Cruisin' World, Pokemon Stadium, and, well, Mickey Speedway, it's only a $10 game usually. So, all right. <laughs> If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and make them down below. I answer everything that's a real question or even a real comment. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't and you have to hit that thumbs down, make a comment. Let me know what 
I could do better. Don't forget to hit the subscribe because it does help. And I'll catch you on that next video. Thanks.